everyone, welcome to this long, long, long overdue uh, video about my G27 settings. I've done loads of videos in the past where you've seen me drifting with the G27 and lots of people, it often sparks debate, can you drift with the G27? Yeah, they're plenty good, they're not perfect, but they're good enough uh, when you get the settings right. So I'm gonna dive straight into the settings here. You see in front of you, I've got my uh, global device settings. If you don't know where this comes from, uh, let me just go back to this Logitech profiler. The profiler that you need is profiler 5.10. That's really, really important. Don't use the, the latest ones. Um, I think version five was the last one that supported the G27. Uh, the newer ones will support the G920, G29, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so for G27 and G25, use 510. Um, in your global settings, you want your overall effect strength uh, to be 100, spring effect 100, damper effect 100. That's just out of the box the way the, the steering wheel is supposed to be. You want to turn off the centering spring. At the time that this was developed, um, we didn't have a lot of really great simulation titles that this was aimed at, and uh, when you let go of the steering wheel, a lot of them didn't self right the steering wheel, so the center spring brings it back to center. We don't need any of that nonsense because uh, the likes of Assetto Corsa, iRacing, Or Factor, all those kind of, they, they all do that for you. Um, you want to make use of the full 900 degrees of rotation. That's really, really important. And this one's really important here. Game settings allow the game to adjust the settings. That's it as far as the profiler is concerned. Um, set this at a global level you don't need a game specific profile you can if you want if you've got multiple games and you find that something works better in a different game in this video i'm concentrating mainly on Assetto Corsa so i use Assetto Corsa content manager and uh, that's just the easiest way for me to see all my controls and all that kind of stuff all these settings are in the game itself as well so uh, don't worry about that but i'm just going to concentrate on uh, content manager here so uh, in the uh, settings controls and steering, uh, you obviously want to make sure that your G27 20, uh, or your whatever your steering wheel is selected. Put it to 900 degrees of uh, rotation. Put the gamma at 1 um, and the scale at 100. So that's pretty default as the steering wheel is supposed to work. Um, make sure you have the filter and speed sensitivity right down to 0. Uh, don't worry about my, my gammy pedals and their dead zones. Um, I, uh, I'm due to upgrade my pedals at some stage. Um, button system, don't care any about that. Uh, anything about that patch, don't care. This is where the, uh, where the magic happens, really. So force feedback, you want your gain to be at 100%. Again, 100% force feedback. Uh, you want filter at zero, minimum force at 10. So a lot of these settings you'll see are at zero because um, really they just confuse the, the G-Series wheels. They're pretty simple and they can't get too much information across at once so the less information if we only send the important information to the steering wheel then that's what you feel and that's what translates to your mind uh, it would be nice to get all those extra little bits uh, you know feeling bumps properly in that but i think the settings here work pretty well um, curb effects i have them at 40 road effect at 25 that's kind of personal preference but these work very well for me slip effect zero abs effect zero um, turn on soft uh, lock um, and uh, turn off all the other stuff here. Post-processing, uh, turn off the center boost gain, center boost range. Uh, do enable force feedback post-processing though. Um, this is the, uh, this section here uh, may not look like this for you, but you need to generate a LUT file. Um, LUT files are basically in a very kind of a, an unintelligent way. They're basically, as your wheel gets older or even wheels from the factory, um, they're less accurate in certain parts of the rotation. So sometimes, for instance, if they're at 90 degrees, they may react slower than if they're at zero degrees. That's just an example. That's, uh, uh, but basically the LUT file, um, and I'll show you how to generate that LUT file in a second. The LUT file smooths out that power curve so that it knows how much power it needs to put in at all the certain uh, parts. As, as, a, as a result, you end up actually with a far more responsive steering wheel, and it actually feels way quicker. You'll see while I'm generating the LUT file that uh, the G27 actually moves far quicker than uh, you would think it should. Uh, for instance, when, when, you, when you start up your PC and your steering wheel does that kind of labored full rotation, that's 
relatively slow. If you look at the LUT file generation, even that little test, how quickly that actually moves, uh, it looks like a different steering wheel. So uh, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go straight into uh, generating that. Check it out. So to generate your LUT file, you want to uh, get this application called WheelCheck. I've got a link in the description below to the uh, the race department link for that. That has all the instructions there as well. You can read those instructions, but uh, what I say in this video should be enough. Uh, you want to double click that, open up your, your WheelCheck application. Um, it's going to detect your G27 and uh, all you need to do, you don't need to touch any of these settings. All you need to do is go to step log two linear force test. It'll seem like it's doing nothing. Uh, give it a second and uh, your steering wheel's about to become possessed. You can see uh, a little graphic in the corner there of what it actually looks like while it's while it's running. Um, and uh, you'll notice straight away that it's um, your steering wheel's actually reacting quite quickly. It's like there's a far quicker motor inside in it. Um, it's because it's learning how to properly control itself, uh, which is, which is kind of cool. So you just wait for that to finish. Uh, it doesn't take long. It takes about 30 seconds or so. It goes quicker and quicker. Oh, it goes further and further. And then uh, one of the things that uh, people kind of struggle with then is, uh, well, once that's done, how do I know it's done and where does the output file actually show up? Um, and it's not that clear even from the instructions that are on race department. So uh, there we go. Once it kind of stops, then it's done. Uh, your output file will be in your documents. So if you go to this PC documents, I'll just sort those by date. This is the one that was just generated. Now you can open it if you want, but it doesn't really mean much um, to the naked eye. So now that you've got your uh, CSV file generated, you need to create the actual LUT file. And uh, I know this is a little bit cumbersome, but this is well worth it. You only end up doing it once and uh, you shouldn't have to do it for a while. If you find over time that your wheel gets worse or whatever, uh, just run it again. But uh, you need this LUT generator um, file. I'll link that below as well. When you click that, it says open and save LUT. Open CSV, save LUT. So let's uh, pull the latest one, which was uh, here, 208. Open and then you want to output it somewhere. So uh, I'll just call it Lawrence Demo, hit save, there we go. So it corrects values, all that kind of stuff. Hit quit. Um, now your uh, LUT file should be generated and I've generated mine in uh, users, documents, Assetto Corsa, CFG. So import. Documents, Assetto Corsa, CFG. So this is the one I just created. Hit open. Uh, you'll see since I've last done this, the curve has changed slightly. So, uh, and, and that curve may vary, but in general, it uh, it always gets it spot on. So uh, that's all you need to do. Uh, now you should be able to uh, drift as easily as, uh, as it looks. Um, but uh, the, I guess the golden rule is setup can only bring you so far. You need to practice, especially with something like drifting. Just keep on practicing. Um, these settings are ideal for grip and drift. Um, I actually do mainly grip. I do uh, championship races twice a week. Anybody familiar with my channel will see that I, uh, I upload highlights and stuff like that. And track guides. Um, they're all done on these settings when I use the G27. Uh, I have recently upgraded to a TSPC racer because that came up really, really cheap. Um, and it is a superior wheel by far. Um, but the G27 is uh, definitely worth it for the money. Um, the uh, the TSPC racer is a lot more expensive. Uh, it's like three times the price or so, but it's not three times the wheel and you don't get um, bits like the shifter and the pedals. I know you don't get the shifter with the newer, uh, newer Logitech wheels, but the Logitech wheel is just by far the best value. And uh, for entry level, at least for your first year or two of, of doing sim racing, Logitech should provide uh, more than you need. So that's about it. Um, if uh, these settings help you, uh, please share them with your friends, share them around, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, check out my other content as well. Thanks a million. Cheers for watching.